Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Let's go ahead and open your Bibles to the 8th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. I'm not going to keep you real long tonight. I say that and then I have a four-hour sermon. Some of y'all, I saw all y'all just flinch right then. Okay, everybody stand up. Say, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, you can't say that because you're on the camera. I got it. It'll pick up. Okay. Hallelujah. Say, I love, I love Jesus. Now, you put your left foot in and take your left foot out. Put your left foot in and shake it all about. Now, all right. You can sit back down and at least know that you're breathing out there. And if you can't talk because of the microphones, wave something and get a hanky out. Let's go on, look me, Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through um, uh, 13. It says, And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, he came into the, uh, there came unto him a centurion beseeching them. If you read the different Gospels, uh, what we end up with here is, you know, the different views of the account. But basically what's happening is actually they're sending one, someone back and forth to Jesus from the centurion. He actually has not come himself. And, um, and so, you know, the, you know, the guy comes or, or either he has somebody with him and that guy's doing all the talking. Uh, for some cultural reason, they weren't supposed to communicate, okay, one-on-one. -on -one. So they had, a, they had a go between. It's kind of like, you know, Jesus said something, the guy goes, turns to the guy. The guy says it back to the other guy, the guy turns to Jesus. So there you go. <clears throat> but for all practical, it was the same as if he was doing it. So he says here, uh, Lord, my servant lieth at home, grievous, uh, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy. You should come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. And I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. To another come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. Now, when, now understand, first of all, he's saying here, I'm basing <clears throat> the fact that you can just speak the word on the fact that I understand how authority works. Amen. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to him, to them that followed, I verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. <coughs> out into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing teeth. And he said to the centurion, Go your ways, you have believed, be it done unto you. And his servant was healed in the self-same hour. And so Jesus marveled. You remember a couple times Jesus marvels. One of them is at unbelief. He marveled because of their unbelief. Here he marvels because of faith. Now, here's why he marveled because of the unbelief of Israel. Remember that? You know, he, he could do, uh, do mighty, no mighty work, save his, laid his hand on a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Why? They were covenant people. They had the right to it. Then here, the centurion is not a covenant person, but he understands authority and, so therefore, and understood how faith worked because of authority. And Jesus marveled and said he hadn't found that kind of faith in all of Israel. And that made him marvel. Why? This guy didn't even have a right to it. And he, was, he understood how authority worked and got a hold of it. The people who had the right to it didn't understand it and couldn't get it. Okay? And so we have here an understanding that the uh, authority, that the authority of words is based in the ones having authority. He said, you know, he says, speak the word only. Am I, am I, and, uh, because I, and then he says, yes, you know, just speak the word only. My servant shall be healed. For I say unto one, go, and I'm a man under authority. And I say this one, go, and he goeth. And notice he said he was a man set under authority. I am a man, one translation, or one version, or one gospel says I'm a man set under authority. Matthew says I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. Now, he's under authority, and he has authority. Meaning what? When we're under God's authority, and we submit it to God's authority, we also have authority. 
Okay? And this is what he's saying. I'm a man under authority, and I have soldiers under me. In other words, I'm under authority, and I possess authority. The reason I possess authority is because I'm set under authority, which is one reason Satan bucks authority so much in the church. It undermines faith. All these renegades running around there, they know everything, and you don't, you don't need to listen to anybody, don't need to be submitted to anybody. That's all the devil. Just go ahead. I know you may not like it, but it's the devil. Why? It's set, it's, just, it's a weapon or a strategy of the devil to rob you of your understanding of faith. Because if you're not under authority, you cannot exercise authority. So Satan works on every arena to undermine people so that they don't understand how to be submitted to authority and exercise authority. Here this man was. Now, do you think he liked everyone that got people over him? Probably not, but he said, I'm a man under authority. Having soldiers under me. See, we're set under authority, having authority under us. We have the right to speak things the Bible promises us and to have authority over things. You know, Jesus said, behold, I give you power. Go over to Luke uh, See the Luke 5 or Luke 8. We'll have to just venture over there. How about that? Hope I'm not wrong on both of them. Looks like I'm wrong on both of them. That 10. <laughs> it's a Luke. Luke chapter 10. I'm looking for, behold, I give you thought. I give you power over all the serpents and scorpions, over all the power of the enemy. Yeah, there you go. Look, 19, is it there? Ah, I looked at the wrong verse. Jesus says here in Luke chapter 10, verse uh, 1, after these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place whether he himself would come. And uh, therefore said he unto them, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Pray you therefore the Lord of the harvest, he'll send forth the laborers into his field. And he goes on here and gives them all the things they're supposed to do. And then verse 17, and the seven he returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And Jesus answered back and said, he said unto them, I beheld light, Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpion and over all the power of the enemy. Now, the, the word power is used twice, but it's two different Greek words here. He said, I give you power, exosia in the Greek, in reference to authority. To tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the dunamis of the enemy. So it's a, it's a dun, dun, dunamis, dynamite, power. Working power. You know, miraculous power is often used when talking about miracles of, in the kingdom of God, but it's the same Greek word that we use for that, dunamis. Notice that Jesus didn't give them dunamis over the serpents and scorpions. He gave them authority, exosia. Why? Because the authority is backed up by the dunamis of God. All right? But if you don't have the exosia, the dunamis, you, you can't get the dunamis to work for you. The dunamis of God won't work against the dunamis of the devil unless you've got the exosia to put it in operation. Right. Amen. And so Jesus says here, now remember, the man, the, the, uh, the centurion over in Matthew chapter 5 says that, you know, I, that I'm a man under authority and I have soldiers under me and I say to this one go and he goeth to this one come and he cometh to another do this and he doeth it. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Jesus marveled because of his unbelief. Why? Because he understood this very thing, authority. Satan and his kingdom. <clears throat> Go over to Ephesians, the second chapter. You can kind of hold all these places in your mind. But Ephesians chapter 2. Can we say, thank God for the word of God. And thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God that Jesus is Lord. Thank God that God is God. God don't never change. I know God is God. Right, anyway. I said it's Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19, and, and Jesus is praying, you know, I mean, not Paul is praying for the church. He says this. 
He, he says, uh, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, verse 18, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance is in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. So here Jesus has been seated, where? At the right hand, far above. Okay? And put all things under his feet. And given him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Now, look over here at, um, in the chapter 2, where he says here, oh, let's go ahead and keep reading. And you happy quicken who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked, According to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation or lifestyle. In time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together by, uh, with Christ, and by grace you were saved. That was, a, you know, a side thought by grace you were saved. Then back to the point. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, we understand there, there are, there are uh, truths in the Bible. Some of what some people refer to as vital truth and others what, uh, um, oh, glory. Positional truth. There we go. Positional truth. Vital truth means it, it, it is an active truth now. There's some things that, that we'll experience in heaven. But, you know, positional truth is where, where, we're, where we are in Christ. Vital is this application in this realm. Now, we, you know, we're going to live with the Lord forever with a glorified body. But you don't have that right now. That's coming. But we positionally, we're seated with Christ in other places. Now, where is Christ seated? In the right hand of the Father, all above all principality, power, bite, dominion, every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And all things are under his feet. Well, if you're seated with him, then where is everything? Under your feet. Isn't that right? <clears throat> Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name. Over in Philippians. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now let's think back now to the centurion. The centurion came and said, I am a soldier. I'm a man set or under authority. Having soldiers under me. Now, <clears throat> in one sense, part, part of our soldiery, <laughs> that's probably not a word, but I'll just use it. We might find that's an old English word that we don't use anymore. Hallelujah. Maybe the Brit in me foot came out, you know? Probably not. Anyway, but part, you know, it could be the angels, you know, that, we're, that they go out and work for us. And the Bible says they're ministering spirits sent forth to minister for the servants of righteousness. Amen. Not two, but four. Amen. But notice that the guy said, I'm a man set or under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say, to this one, go, and he goeth to another, come, and he cometh to this one, do this, and he doeth it. So speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Because he was under authority. Now, we've been raised up with Christ positionally and made to sit with him in heavenly places. Amen? Isn't that right? And he's seated far above all principality, power, might, dominion, and uh, Rules of the darkness of this world and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. He's above everything. Everything is subordinate to him. By what? By virtue of what? His name. By virtue of authority. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Then you go to Matthew's gospel and Jesus said this. He said, all authority in heaven and earth are given unto me, therefore go. And in my name. Well, what, what, what's he telling us? See, we understand that if Jesus has, con Jesus has conquered, we're an occupying army. 
And one says, we're not, an, we're not a conquering army, we're an occupying army. We enforce authority on the works of darkness. And we, work, we, we do that in the arena in which they affect us. Does that make sense? You just can't go over there and cast all the devils out of Greensboro. Why? If you could do that, Jesus would have done it. We'd all be in heaven. But remember, remember what the, uh, remember the pigs? <laughs> the swine, the swine's killing themselves. Well, remember the bad man from Gadarenes who had all those devils in him. Jesus said, who are you? He said, we are legion for we are many. And they said this, Jesus, Jesus came and they said, we know who you are. Have you come to torment us before the time? What time? Time, we, we understand, if, you know, do some study, and we just don't have time to, to do all that here in this particular teaching because we're trying to set some things up for healing, not necessarily about, you know, everything else, but it, it'll work, you know. Adam obviously had a time that he was given lease on the earth. And when Satan got that from Adam because had Adam committed high treason, it was still a limited time the devil could use it. You know this, we know this, the Bible says he knows his time is short. Well, if God could have come in at any time he wanted to and stopped the devil, he would have stopped in that beginning. He wouldn't have waited until, you know, until, you know, there were four billion people going to hell or whatever over history. He'd have just gone ahead and stopped it and stopped it with Adam when they had all the people in hell. But Adam had the right to transfer that authority. He may not have the, uh, the uh, moral right, but he had the legal right. And then because, because he didn't have the moral right, he died spiritually, separated from God, and had Jesus, God had to send a redeemer to redeem him back. <clears throat> Can you say amen? And so, Adam, Satan had that authority, but the demon said this, have you come to torment us before the time? There's a time coming that they won't have, you know, they won't have the ability to function outside the realm of the, the, um, the second death. They won't, have the realm, they won't have the ability to go before the throne of God. We know this. Remember, the Bible says this in one place. In the book of Job, it talks about how that the how that Satan came up with the sons uh, came up before the throne of God. Hello, boy, I'm just gonna go all over here. I wasn't gonna get over here, but I'm going over here. Sometimes it's hard not to do it. Came before the th sons, throne of God, and Satan came to find out how much authority he had over over Job. And God looks at him and says, have you, have, have you said, you know, the, King James, King James calls uh, more uh, confusion over this subject than anything just by its interpretation. Have you considered my servant Job? Now, see, in, in modern English, have you considered, it sounds like he's going, hey, Job's over here, he issues evil, he loves God, doesn't do anything wrong, and devil, I know you ain't seen him. Have you ever considered going out there and attacking him? No. You know, Job said, and Satan said, no, you said a hedge about him. He said, you could do what, you know, he's in your hands, you can, but you can't touch his life. And if you go study Job, one of the things we find out is that Job's fear was in the realm of his family, of everything else, but not of himself. That's why Satan couldn't touch his life. And then Job goes on and says over in the third chapter, I believe it is, near the end, what I feared has come upon me, and that which I greatly feared has befallen me. Fear opened the door. Satan came to find out where his authority went. Now, why was Satan able to get up that close to God? Because Adam, authority, went up to, but did not include the throne of God. Well, how do you know that? Because, all the, because the type of heaven and the sacrifices of heaven and the ordinances of the temple were, were tip, uh, t uh, typology of heaven. And so when the high priest went in and he had to go through the veil, there had to be a supernatural transference to get him through the veil. He put blood on the mercy seat, but he didn't put it on the throne. And when Jesus entered in, he put his blood on the mercy seat, what? To cleanse it from the taint of man. Think about this. All that time from the fall of Adam until Jesus went into the, went into the heavenly holy holies with his own blood, sin had tainted up to the very throne of God, but not including the throne of God. Satan's authority, man's authority was limited up to, but not including the throne of God. And so in the earthly tabernacle, that had to be cleansed with blood. And when Jesus entered in, he took his own, but he did not put it on the throne. He put it on the mercy seat. That is how far man's sin went, because that's how far man's authority went. Sin went where his authority went. 
So it was not above God, but it was right below it. So when Jesus entered in, he cleansed it with his blood. Glory to God. And, redeemed, and, and, and purchased back unto himself, Jesus Christ, the, the man Christ Jesus. Amen. Isn't that just God's whole plan? Man, God outsmarted the devil in so many ways. I mean, it's just not even funny. But the man Christ Jesus now repossessed the authority of man and sat down at the right hand of the Father with it. Amen? And when we get born again, we become in Christ and we're raised up and seated with him. We're seated in that very authority that man once possessed. Here's the thing, it's in safekeeping because the one who has it gives it to you by proxy through his name. You can't take it by yourself and walk off with it. it outside of Christ Jesus, you don't have it. The, the, very, the very authority is in his name. It's not in his name. See, before that, Adam could just say and do. But when Jesus got it back, he, he, it, was, it was done in proxy. Any man who's in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. So therefore, the authority we possess is solely based on the relationship between me, us and Jesus Christ and the ability to use his name because we're in him. You get out of him, you don't have the authority because he now possesses it. And he will not relinquish the authority of man to a renegade. A spiritual renegade, a spiritual, a human spirit that's renegade from him does not get access to the authority he possesses for man or as the man Christ Jesus. Understand, the Bible calls him that and it's referring to his humanity. Jesus is and was and always will be the son of God. First begotten of the father then became firstborn from the dead. He is God. He's the second person of the Godhead, God the Father, God. So I'm not diminishing his deity, but see, there's things he had to do as a man in order to redeem man. And so he lay aside his rights to deity and the glory and walked among us as a man, and then he achieved and brought back and gained the authority of man back, meaning he had all the authority up to where man's authority now he possesses, but he does not have the authority of the Father's throne. He's the second person of the Godhead, and he's at his right hand. He does, not, he, did not, he does not supersede the Father. Jesus is submitted to the will of the Father. As the, second son, as, the, as the Son of God, the second person of the Godhead, and the Holy Ghost is submitted to the will of the Father and the Son. Well, God's a trinity. He's, one, he's three being one. How does that work? Listen, I'm going to tell you some stuff you just don't get because we're, we're not that spiritual minded. It's, it's, it's a little bit deeper than we, we, than we figured out. You know? Now, here's the beautiful thing. The Bible says when, when, when we see him as he is, we'll be like him. We'll, when we see him, we'll be like him. Amen. Remember John, first John's gospel, I mean, uh, epistle, John, first, first epistle of John. He said when, when he shall appear, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. There's going to be some things that take place just because we see it. That's one of the things. That's not, that's lack of faith. No, there's some things you can't walk in until then. God's reserved it. Glory. Then you go, oh, that's, that's, oh, that's it. Boom, you step right over into it. Woo! Glory to God. Now, well, I don't know if I'm doing a good enough job on authority or not, but hallelujah. Jesus came. Redeem man, then he took his own blood, went into the mercy seat of God, into the throne of God, put his blood on the mercy seat. Why? Because that's how far man's authority went. And that's because that's, we know that's how far man's authority went, because that's how far sin went. If he'd gone any further, he would have had to put his blood on that. He took his blood to the highest place of man's contamination. Glory to God. And we know that because in the type of the heaven, remember the, the, the tabernacle was a, was a shadow or a type of those heavenly things. We, the Bible clearly states that in, in, in Hebrews. You know that the temple, the tabernacle was a type. Moses did these things as a type or according, actually it says it this way I believe, according to the pattern he saw in heaven. He saw into the spirit and saw it and then had to replicate it in a natural means. And then the, all the ordinances were inst instituted to show where man's sin went. Man's sin went to the mercy seat. 
glory, but that's been cleansed. Hallelujah. Jesus entered in once and for all with his own blood. Not with the blood of bulls or goats or the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer. He entered in once and all with his own blood. Can you say amen? Now, <clears throat> that authority is eternal. It cannot be taken away from the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you here? Jesus possesses eternal authority as the man. I'm not saying he's not Jesus or not the Son of God. But his authority, his eternal authority from, from the time he entered in and once and for all sat down at the right hand of the Father was man's authority over principality, powers, mights, dominions, rulers of the darkness of this world. The very authority that Adam gave up in the garden. Because the Father told Adam and gave him the authority to subdue the earth and replenish it. When Satan came, he could have stopped it. He had the authority. Why didn't he? I don't know. We just know he didn't. Well, I'll tell you one thing. When I get to heaven, I'm going to ask Adam why he didn't do it. No, you're not. Paul didn't do it. We don't have anybody in the Bible who went to heaven, came back, telling us why Adam didn't take his authority over the devil. Hello? The fact of the matter is, Jesus went and got it back. I said, Jesus went and got it back. Can somebody say glory? Now, <clears throat> what's that got to do with healing? And so, well, here, here's the deal. When you understand authority, uh, authority, authority, it is the fundamental basis of faith. You have to understand your right to, in the arena of believing and receiving and, and, and so forth, okay? You have to understand that you have the right to tell the devil no. Not only do you have the right, you got the authority to tell him no. You have the exousia. Now let's go back over there. Uh, Luke chapter uh, 10, verse 19. Behold, I give you authority, exousia, over all, oh, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power, dunamis, of the enemy. In other words, he can come against you with all his stuff, but you've got the exousia to say no, and at that point, the dunamis of the one who possesses all authority comes into manifestation and operation against the dunamis of the devil. Who you think has got more dunamis? Now, go back and study your Bible. You'll find out that, um, that Lucifer, the bright morning star, said, I will ascend my throne into the heavens. I'll be as the most high. I'll send my throne. Actually, what he was saying was he was going to take over heaven. See, he had seen speaking and words work and had been given. You understand limited authority? Now, that's why I said man's authority was limited up to but not including the throne of God. He couldn't overthrow God. He didn't have the authority. God didn't give him that authority. So he was, he was given uh, the authority, and, and there's legal terms for that, and I'm not really sure what it is right off the bat, but, and I've heard them before, but, and, and if I hear it, I go, oh, yeah, that's it, you know. But you, you know, and I'm not talking about just power attorney. I'm talking about, le you know, authority to exercise stuff. Um, if you are a South Carolina state trooper, you don't have authority to come to North Carolina and arrest people. Your authority is limited to the charter of your state, okay? Uh, if you're FBI, FBI agent, you've got limited authority. If you're CIA, you've got no authority really in America. You're supposed to, it, you're, the charter of the CIA is not even in America. You're not supposed to be functioning in America. But how many know which police force has authority anywhere in the United States of America? U.S. Marshals. The U.S. Marshals Service has authority in any state, in any jurisdiction, anywhere. They got authority that the FBI doesn't have. Okay? All right? Each one of these police agencies has a, a limitation on their authority. It's, it's stated in their charters and stuff. God gave man authority up to him, but not including his throne. When he gave that to Satan, Satan had that up to, but not including his throne. Amen. So, Satan had seen, and, see, and he was the anointed cherub that covered. Now, if you, when you study the Bible, you find out, old morning star, uh, Satan had uh, Lucifer, bright morning star. And really, <clears throat> at that time, Lucifer was not a bad name. You know, I mean, now you get into black, all the Satan and stuff. And Lucifer, you know, they, it's, it's, they're demons. 
But he had pipes in him that he was an organ director. There was light that came out of him. He was covered in topazes and diamond jewels. He walked on the earth. The light came out of him because he was a light being while he hadn't fallen. Everything God created was a light being. And so that light, he was beautiful, but he got lifted up. And then be, but because he had heard God speak things, declare things, make things, all things because of authority, he began to try to use that to supersede the realm of his authority. I'll ascend into the heavens. I'll be as the most high. Glory to God. He's going to take his throne above God's. He was trying to use confession to throw, overthrow heaven. And got a third of the angels hooked up with him. But God said, I don't know if you can find this in Ezekiel. I believe it's Ezekiel or not. <clears throat> but God said, I will cast you as profane from my presence. Now, it didn't really tell us what happened at that moment, but we get a, a light, a, a little glimpse into this where Jesus over here in Luke 10 says, I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven. I believe what happened was God said, I'll cast you as profane out of my presence. Okay, by the multitude of thy merchants, thy eyes, they filled thee with mist and violence. Okay, this is equal 28, 16. Uh, fill the, uh, thou hast sinned, therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. I will destroy the old covering chariot from the midst of the stones of fire. And I believe because God's light, everything happens at the speed of light. Jesus said he, he, felt, he beheld him as lightning fall from heaven. He came out of heaven at 186,000 miles a second and ran into the earth. Why? I said all this because of this. God's dunamis is greater than the dunamis that the devil possesses. The devil spoke. God spoke. Devil left on a five-speed train. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> that is still true. Behold, I give you exosia. I'm back over in Luke. And behold, I give you exosia over all uh, the tread on serpents and scorpions, over all the dunamis of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So Satan may say, I'm going to kill you, but you just come right back and say, nope. By his stripes I'm healed. I'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Now, what's happened? I've released the exosia of the dunamis, which will release the dunamis of the Most High, the conquering one, over the dunamis of the enemy who's trying to put something on me. I have authority to tell him to stop in the name of Jesus. Now, you just don't go, ah, devil, you can't do anything to me. I'm just taking you. You can't do it. I speak over you. You can't do anything to me. That's no good. What are you doing? You're trying to use your dunamis against his dunamis. He'll kick your back end. Yeah. Yeah. The authority lies in the, Jesus said, in my name you will do this. Right. Meaning what? That you, now, man, because you didn't handle your authority right, I went and got it back. But in order for you to use it, you have to use it through the agency of me. And how do we do that? In my name, you'll cast out devils. Or ex actually, the word, you know, in my name, you'll exercise authority over devils. Could be better translated, in my name, you will um, uh, cast out, exercise authority over demons. Amen. We have it through the agency of Jesus Christ using his name, meaning, therefore, that the man who conquered, the man who possessed it, has given us an authority to exercise authority over demons, the exorcy over them, in his name. Now, once his name is released by faith through the believer, then what stands behind that name is the dunamis of God, which in the devil is trying to use his dunamis to enforce something, but God's dunamis comes on the scene. We also know the dunamis of God is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, Dr. John G. Lake, you know, remember back when the bubonic plague was going on in Africa, he was there, and uh, the, the British doctor showed up, and they, they said, you know, he was just handling the patients with no, no whatever, and they said, you can't do that. You know, he says, no, just watch this. Remember, he took the froth from the guy on, on, a, on a slide. They put it under the microscope. And, oh, yeah, that's bubonic plague. It's just, you know, they, this, this, they died. This froth came out of the lungs and stuff and out of their mouth. He said, now, watch this. Took his hand, wiped it, put it on there. Said, now, go look at it. And it died under the microscope right in front of their eyes. He said, that serves as the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus, overcoming the law of sin and death. 
Satan's power is to enforce the law of sin and death. His dunamis. The dunamis of God enforces the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. What puts into force in your life the dunamis of God or the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus is the exosia that has been granted unto you to speak whatever it is in the name of Jesus. So we declare our healing. I think I told you we get back to healing. And through the authority of the name of the exosia of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we declare our healing based on the authority that the man Christ Jesus recaptured and repossessed from Satan <coughs> when he made a show of him openly, triumphing over in him, over him in it. Amen. Took all the handwriting of ordinances that was against us and nailed it to his cross. Glory to God. Made a show of the enemy. Went up to heaven, took his own blood, entered in, put it on the mercy seat, cleansed man's sin, thus regained man's authority. Amen. And when he regained man's authority, he took it and sat down at the right hand of the Father. And when you confess him as Lord, you are raised up with him and made to sit positionally. Now you sit together with him in Christ Jesus. And the authority of man that he possesses, you can exercise in this vital life through speaking the name of Jesus and then making the declaration of what he has said or what his word says. Now, the dunamis of heaven comes. Now, remember this, that when they were fighting over the bones of Moses, that the angel of the Lord did not, say, did not uh, bring a railing accusation against the devil, but said, the Lord rebuked thee. And he had to let him go. The demon, the, 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 the Satan had to let it go. I mean, he wanted to, he would probably want to do something with Moses' bones and do something with it, but it wasn't Moses, it was what? Okay. Sometimes you go, was it Moses or was it light? Was it, uh, the Lord rebuked thee. What's it? The authority's in the Lord. He's granted us to exercise it in his name. Why do you, do you see why there's so much fight against respect for authority? Because if we don't get it, we don't get it. We don't get the authority. We don't get the promises. We don't get the answers. Oh, but thank God the Holy Ghost, the teacher of the church. He's helping us to understand. Can you say amen? Thank God the teacher of the church is working us, bringing revelation and bringing light, praise God. Taking things like we've just said here tonight and giving understanding so that you can exercise the authority and receive from God the things you need to receive from God. Sometimes we kind of separate faith and authority. You can't. You can't. Jesus didn't. When the man said, uh, I'm a man set under authority and has soldiers under me and said all those things, then Jesus said, I haven't found anybody in Israel that's got that kind of faith. He didn't say that anybody in Israel that's got that kind of authority, that kind of faith. Because he understood that faith worked within the parameters of authority. And the church needs to understand that. You're not getting the job done with your ability. It has to come through an understanding that Jesus Christ, the head of the church, is the man Christ Jesus who went and got back our authority. Now he sits at the right hand of the Father, and we speak in his name that he releases heaven's dunamis against the dunamis of the enemy, and boom, there's an obliteration of Satan's authority or power in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.